it going? It is going. <laughs> got these freaking nice cameras here. What is this? <laughs> Try to get it crystal clear for you. Crystal clear. All right. All right. What's your, been your favorite part of working on second season? Second season? Oh man, it's just uh, getting to correct all the, the things that I hated about the first season. You know? <laughs> Were there a lot of corrections? Yeah, I mean, you know, any creator's gonna look at something they create and say, yeah. I hate it. You know, it's like a it's, great artist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I think second season is just it's just another swing at a, a lot of things that uh, you know, a lot of you know, people that like the show, you know, obviously criticism no matter what you do. Um, but it was it was good, you know. It was, there's there's always good criticism, um, and it's good to listen to people because that's only how you become better, you get better, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so transitioning between going on YouTube, getting everything found out, yeah. and then it blowing up on TBS, like how's that emerging experience been? Because I mean, I, I do outlet on YouTube, yeah. but I also do content as well. Yeah, so yeah. I'm just really curious, like, man, I'm doing this, now I'm living this, and yeah, now yeah. where is this going to go, kind of? How do you feel right now? I yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty surreal because it's like yeah. it's my end goal was always kind of to get on TV and movies. Exactly. And, um, I always thought like this is gonna take forever because I was from Tennessee. Like, who the heck is gonna see me? Exactly. Um, the great thing about YouTube is like you can be anywhere, and anybody can see you. It's just the right eyes have to see you. Exactly. And it took 12 years for that to happen. But hey, all that 12 years was just practice, you know. And I would say like the biggest thing is is that persistence. If you if you persist. Even when it like things suck, you know, you just push through and you keep doing it. Um, eventually, someone's going to see it. You know, it's going to happen. It's just you just have to keep doing it. The moment you quit, there's no chance. You know, they, they're just going to basically be like, well, we need somebody else. You know, they're going to find somebody else that didn't quit. Um, what helps you keep going? I mean, with me, it's always been. Like I, I was so hyper focused even in like high school. You know, yeah. This is what I wanted to do, and I, for some odd reason, even in the toughest times, it was just because it was so much fun. Yeah. And so whenever I, I create something, I, I'm just having so much fun that I'm like, that's where I find enjoyment. You know. Yeah. So I get motivated when I'm having fun. You know, and I hang out with friends and, and we're creating stuff, and it's like. I don't know, it's just tapping into that, you know, and I think uh, anytime that uh, I hit like a roadblock or something, I just kind of go hang out with a friend and we start, then we'll start talking and I'm like, oh man, what, what if we do this? And then you start going on a tangent and then you're like, man, we just came up with a really awesome idea, you know. Um, but yeah. Cool. Uh, going on Are there any other projects that you're currently working on or thinking about developing? Oh, too many, man. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's so many ideas of those like an animated and everything. Animated, live action, movies, it's it's unreal. I got too many ideas. Because it's it's that online mentality of like you release a video, I have to think fast for the next one. So I've always because I did it twelve years, I'm constantly thinking of ideas. And what I'll do is I'll just write them down and then I'll start developing them just on the weekends. Because that's all I do, I just kind of work and, and just it's fun, you know? Um, but yeah, too many, man. It's, it's unreal. I have way too many. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I could say what it is, but I, don't, I can't, yeah. But how do you like prioritize those? Because like coming up with so many ideas, so yeah. I feel like it's lost within the shuffle. So well, how do you keep those in mind? Like, well, a lot of it is just kind of like developing it to a point where you just like shelf it, mm -hmm. you know? And maybe not right now is the best time yeah, to dive into it. But sooner or later something comes Yeah, yeah. Up. But sooner or later, like you can always come back to an idea. The same thing with Final Space. I did Gary's Space back in like 2010, you know? And I was like, I just hold, held off for like six years to about doing anything. I was like, well, I want to reboot this. And I did it in like 2015, 2016. Look what happened, you know? A lot of us, I just, I, I have the idea. It's a great idea. I'm just gonna hold on to it. Maybe now is not the right time. You know? Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just right now priorities for space. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I would imagine. <laughs> Are there any like challenges, like when you're, you know, doing voices for these characters? Is it like hard to figure out a way to find them? Yeah, well, I mean, that's one of the things I want to fix in, in season one. Is, yeah, I messed up on Gary so bad. Um, and I think with, with that, it was like, there's a lot of politics, you know, in, in making a TV show that yeah. people don't know about. But, and I love TV. TV is great. I, I really mean that. And I'm not just saying that because all cameras are recorded. Um, but it was kind of a thing where, you know, they, they wanted to be fine. 
you know, that, that comedic engine because there's only so much money that you have for voice actors. You have to be like, well, we need to add another joke in here or add another joke. And the go-to would be like, get Owen. You know, he's the greater voice of the show. He can hop in the booth real fast and, do, and add another joke. And unfortunately, that it would just cram packed full of Gary. And the, the thing is, like, he was always meant to be at the beginning of the episode, kind of annoying and kind of like, he didn't know how to talk to And then it progresses where he kind of becomes who he's supposed to be throughout the rest. Yeah, it's just a, a growth that I was going to do. Whether or not I sold that, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, there's always a challenge to voicing any, any character. Um, and a lot of it is, you know, finding out that voice. Like, what is that funny voice that you have? Because if you do something too ridiculous, it's too much. Yeah. You know? And then you have to find that happy medium. And it, it's really hard to find. How many takes do you have to go for, like, just to get it right? I'm, I'm kind of one of the people that I'll, I'll do 50 takes if I feel like the 50th one is the right one. There's some that will do like, that will be like one. You know, just one take, you get one chance. You know? <laughs> and that's a lot of like the bigger, you know, actors that have established names. You know, they, you don't want to tell them to do it again. <laughs> um, but yeah. And as far as your character Gary, like he's kind of layered. Yeah. But I'm curious. Y'all know how much you can say. Yeah. Going into the second season, how are we going to see him be refined, so to speak? Yeah, well, I think the, the biggest dynamic, and this is a good question, and this is probably something you can talk about. The biggest okay. dynamic, and, and the thing with Gary in season one, mm -hmm. was you had this guy that was pretty much crazy, <laughs> surrounded by, like, pretty straight people. Yeah. So the idea is essentially in season two is to surround Gary with some pretty insane people, <laughs> forcing him to be more reasonable, you yeah. know? So it's kind of like a, an interesting dynamic, but it's I think it's going to play really good. Because I think um, one thing I'll say is, is Conan has a bigger part in season two. And uh, he's pretty much a regular. So it's like, that's going to be a, just another comedic voice. We got a bunch of new characters coming in. Uh, a lot of people kind of already kind of signed on to, to do it. I can't say who. Okay. Um, but they're really funny. So it's, I think it's going to be a really fun dynamic. Um, we got a lot more like female characters coming in, a lot more women coming in, and really kind of adding and filling out that, that cast. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if you got the sure, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was just thinking on the top of my head. Yeah. Uh, or like voice acting, like is there like you were saying, he's in a situation that kind of causes him to be more responsible. Yeah. Is there any part of your life that you draw from that, like was it college or? You know? Yeah, I mean it's. I think Gary is very much uh, is somewhat modeled after me, but I'm, I'm less annoying than Gary. But um, I think it was I think it was something where season one was kind of modeled off of just you know you, you got to go put a lot of your real life experiences in and season one it was like I was out in LA by myself for essentially a year you know just flying to Nashville back and it's like pretty much just by myself and so I tried to you know, put a lot of like loneliness you know and you'd be surprised that you just kind of forget how to talk to people and it's you're just kind of like man I, I just don't know how to communicate with this person and then now it's like it's a little bit of a different scenario where I'm having a lot of more people around me and I'm, I'm way more reasonable you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, so now it's, you got the responsibility yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like a little bit more responsible so it's like I, I feel like it's just playing into that real life experience. So he kind of evolves with you as you go along. I think so. Yeah. I think so. I think he's going to grow with me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, as far as now, like Final Space being a big part of the comedic animation world, do yeah. you travel in circles with like, I don't know, Seth Rogen or Justin Rogen? No, no, no. I am like, not that cool uh, at all, man. <laughs> I am I'm in no circles. Do you have you know? any like stories we can give about anybody? Um, because those guys are nuts. I mean, especially Justin Rowland. Like, yeah. He, I mean, I flew on like a uh, essentially a uh, private jet with him once oh, to, really? to go to Upfronts. Okay. But I was like not in his circle, you know. <laughs> I was adjacent to his, my own mini circle, um, and he, you know, he's he's crazy, man. He's he's a fun guy, yeah. and uh, I think one day, hopefully, my path crosses his, and I can just talk to him because I think he's a great guy. And um, but as far as any circles of celebrities, nobody. I'm just that my circle's Coteen, man. That's my circle. Um, yeah, 
Is there anyone that you would like to work with? Oh yeah, I mean, I would, uh, the crazy thing is, first season, and I, hopefully I can try to find something for him later on, is Jeff Goldblum. I was like, yeah, that would be great. I tried so hard, I wrote him a letter, <laughs> like a really passionate letter, I sent him cupcakes. Um, maybe I'll release that letter someday, but it was like, it was so personal, I was like, please, you know, as, as much as you fought dinosaurs, be, you know, this character for me, you know, like, it was really, really touching, and it didn't do the trick, so. Um, also Sigourney Weaver, I love Sigourney Weaver. Um, there's so many people, you know, and, and you try to take a stab at them, and some say yes. Some are just busy, you know. Yeah. So, also just animation is not the most uh, profitable region right now. The cartoon based on space, you want to get like those children's shows in it, like those big classic movies that are from like literally from space, like Katie. Well, I think that's, you know, one thing with me, I grew up watching a lot of sci fi movies. Yeah. And so, that's just the stuff I, that's the people I like. You know, that's the people I, I just, like, I love. So, um, I even thought of getting Mark Hamill in there. But, I'm like, <laughs> I want to give him something good, you know? So, I'm just waiting. You know, hopefully something pops up. But I don't want to play a bad guy. You know, I want to play the good guy. Because uh, everybody was probably always cast him as a bad guy. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's so good. We were good guys. We were crazy. <laughs> I don't know if he wants to do another one. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think it would. I know. He's passionate about it. I gotta find a really good role for him. Yeah. Something that's like, you're staying on with me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Come in. Uh, awesome. Right? Commit him to your yeah, character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Pounded. Call me the wingman cause I'm on his team. Higher than the flyer spaceship you ever seen. Hotter than the sunbeam cause it's so real. Call him Mr. Wonderful cause he is that deal. The night is dark, it's just before the dawn. And the dawn is coming quick, and crack is coming with